for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, money team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another tip video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over offensive cheats. That's right. I've already done defensive cheats, and I've already done cheats on offense, defense, and special teams. I'll have links in the description below if you guys want to check that out. But make sure to watch this video all the way to the end first, because I'm going to go over 12 offensive tips, tricks, and cheats that are guaranteed to give you a better offensive advantage no matter what game mode you play. Other than that, if you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comment Woo! section. If you want to stay up to date on the hottest Madden trends, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Other than that, let's go and get right into the video. Now, the majority of this video, I'm probably going to spend talking about passing tips because I think that's something that people have the most issue with. But I'm going to start off with running tips. The first tip is something that I think most people know, but for the most part, it's one of the things I get the most comments about in my comment section. People asking how to flip a run play without flipping the entire play. Most people think that you have to flip the entire play by hitting X on the Xbox or Square on PlayStation and then hitting the right trigger which ultimately flips the entire play but a lot of people are surprised to know that you can actually flip the direction of a play without actually flipping the entire play simply by hitting the right stick in whatever direction you want to travel so if you want to go and flip this play to the right all you have to do is hit the right stick to the right you'll get a small animation when in game but ultimately it will flip the direction of the running back now you'll see it also flips the direction of the fullback you will flip the direction of both running backs when you hit this so keep that in mind my next tip is motioning receivers this is something that people don't do enough when it comes to running the football. I see it more often when people are setting up pass plays, but people don't realize the advantage you can have from simply motioning receivers in certain formations. Now, on the defensive side here, I'm looking at a cover two man. If you know your opponent's in a man coverage, a lot of times, especially if you're running a stretch from a formation like this, you can motion the receiver across and the cornerback will follow, giving you a much better chance at getting outside without interference from a cornerback. This also has a huge advantage when it comes to zone coverages because the cornerback will not follow follow in his zone coverage. So when I motion this guy across here, it essentially gives me a blocking advantage on the other side. Before we had one cornerback to one receiver. Now we have two receivers to, you know, the linebacker does shift out a little bit, but ultimately you have two receivers, which means that this one receiver isn't going to block anybody, but he'll at least get on the linebacker or maybe even onto the safety, giving you better blocking downfield. Next up, did you know you could pass twice in one play? That's right, you can create your own flea flicker play out of just about any offensive formation in the game, but I'm going to be using the single back wing slot four verticals play out of the Buffalo Bills playbook. To make a play like this work, all you really need is a running back on a swing pattern. I'm going to give myself a little additional blocking, but ultimately that's all you need is a running back on a swing pattern and a quarterback that's fast enough to get outside the pocket. To do this, all you really have to do is roll in the direction of the running back, get close to them, and throw it to them. Once they catch it, essentially all you have to do is flip it right back to the quarterback, which is the L1, R1, or the left bumper and right bumper at the same time, and they'll essentially bring back up the passing icons and allow you to throw one more ball to the streaking tight end that you created or streaking receiver as you can see right here now the rest of this video we're going to go over passing tips one of the most important passing tips is don't force a bad ball if you don't know if anybody's open just throw the ball away all you have to do at any point in time to throw the ball away is push in the right stick which is also known as the r3 button no matter where you are on the field no matter where you are whether you're in the pocket or not if you don't like what you see instead of making a mistake just throw the ball away out of bounds by pushing in the right stick the next tip that can help you in a bind is playmaking. Playmaking is a little bit more savvy than throwing the ball away, but if you want to control the closest receiver to you, all you have to do is push the right stick in any direction to change the closest receiver's route. Typically, you want to try to direct these receivers to wherever there's an opening on the defense, wherever the zones are not, uh, but typically, I find it's best just to send them up the field. You can see on this play right here, this is basically just a drag or maybe a, a slight alteration, but the second I hit the right stick up and I send them up the field, you can see the linebackers only cover to a certain distance and the receiver over the top is pulling the quarterbacks and safeties back. So this is going to be where you typically find the most space when you playmaker. And I find it's just easiest to remember to always playmaker up. Next up, I'm going to go over two tips because they're very similar. When it comes to throwing balls into tight windows or throwing balls into areas where they might get broken up by safeties, cornerbacks, linebackers, whatever, you're going to want to make sure you do two things. The first thing is going to be a low throw. A low throw is simply holding the left trigger 
Jr. or the L2 button and basically throwing it towards the ground, which does a number of things. Number one, it reduces the chances that the ball will get popped up in the air from uh, a defensive player, which a lot of times can end in interceptions, but it'll also make it a lot easier for you to do something called a secure catch, which you can see the icon comes up the second that I do that. A secure catch will basically mean that the receiver will catch the ball and get down immediately as to not get laid out or basically get the ball knocked out by any oncoming defenders. So at any point in time, if you're trying to basically uh, zip the ball into a tight window or there's defenders in the area, just make sure you use safe catch and low throw by holding the left trigger and hitting the air X button to catch. Did you know that there's actually different styles of blocking when it comes to passing plays? If you pick a play that's intended to be a long pass play, the blocking will actually hold up much better. You can see in the diagram here, they have these elongated dropbacks. But if you pick a play with a much shorter design like the slant stick, which is really all short routes, you can see the blocks are only meant to hold up for so long. You can pick plays that are even shorter that are meant to be like screen plays like the PA bubble over, and you can see they basically just hold their position right away. It's important to know this because if you're trying to throw deep on a play but your blocking is set up like this and it's only gonna hold for a short amount of time, you're probably gonna end up getting sacked. So try to pay attention to what your offensive line is designed to do on any given play. You can also predict where the pressure is gonna come from as well, where plays like this, typically the defensive tackles get off and the, the outside defensive ends get held up. As you can see here, all the defensive tackles got free. Whereas a play like the four verticals, which is a deep drop passing play, you're gonna see how the pressure typically comes off the edge. So you can pretty much predict where the pressure is most likely to come from based off of the diagram of your offensive line's blocking scheme. Another good tip is how to hide your audibles, whether it's flipping a run play, uh, making a hot route adjustment, or basically changing plays entirely. You can do any number of these things while walking to the line of scrimmage uh, as your quarterback. You can make one adjustment that your opponent will not see. Like right here, basically I'm just gonna flip the run to the left. Now you can see the quarterback isn't even set, so there was no animation showing that I flipped the run play. Or if you're running a play that only requires one hot route, you can essentially make that hot route before your quarterback ever gets set, and you can see your opponent will never know whether you're making adjustments or not. Normally when you try to make these adjustments after the quarterback is set, you get a number of animations letting your opponent know that you're making changes. Next up, when it comes to hot routes, the most popular and most utilized hot route in the game is probably just a simple streak route. A lot of times streak routes are really used to get other receivers open because they don't necessarily get open by themselves. On the defense here, I'm looking at a cover two zone. You're going to see how this streak route essentially gets pushed in towards the safety in what's called a zone chuck. Nope. Now, what people don't know is there's an easy way to get around this zone chuck by simply putting this B route on a fade instead of a streak. You can see how the arc diagram changes from where he's going straight into the defensive player to where he's basically going out and around the defensive player. Doing this and doing it from a hash mark to the open side of the field like I am now, you're going to see how this receiver will essentially get outside of that cornerback and basically get him open up the side of the field, which he otherwise would have been covered. Next up, when it comes to routes, there's not a glitchier route in the game than the delay fade. This next play here I'm going to show you guys, the PA Fork, is easily my favorite play in the entire game. You can see it average 42 yards a play, and I've called it 400 times. The route that makes this play so glitchy is the delay fade that the tight end is running, which essentially looks a lot like a drag. There's different types of delay fades you can do. I mean, you have it in your option. At any point in time in the audible, you can put this tight end on delay fade by basically just hitting up on the right stick. All you really have to do in a play like this is put this B route on a street and this play here, because of this delay fade, will be a one-play touchdown against any single defense in the game. And it all has to do with the fact that the, the cornerbacks, the safeties are all kind of waiting for that route to develop. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more offensive tip videos and more tip videos like this in the future, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.